Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome to the true finale of Let's Play Dragon Quest VI. Today, we're at the bottom of the fungeon here to take on the optional super boss of the game. I have my setup listed in the video description there, though I went over it a bit more detail in the previous episode. But I'll go over what's relevant to this as we go along. Okay, how's it going? Nuts. That didn't go as planned. For boss time against Nocturnus himself. Okay, first things first. I want Amos and Navan to cast Kabuff on the party. Rex, I want to use the Sword of Ramias to get oomph on Amos there. And Carver, as a mastered liquid metal slime, I want to use Forbearance. So that way, any elemental damage that Nocturnus would do to us, he absorbs all that. Because liquid metal slimes, you can't damage them with magical attacks. And at least in phase one, Nocturnus mostly uses physical, or not physical, magical attack, so we're basically invulnerable early on. Now, once I've gotten my buff set up, I want Amos to use Focus Strength and Knuckle Sandwich. Rex, I want to use Giga Slash. And Navan, I want to dual cast Frizzle with the duplicate hat that I gave him that copies any spells that he casts. Nocturnus does have a little resistance to Knuckle Sandwich, but the vast majority of the time, you'll get your damage in there. So basically, that's all I really need to do for phase one of the fight. Now, when you see him use Pearly Gates, that means he's going to loop back to the beginning of his AI script for phase one of the fight. So you know you're going to see a lot of magical attacks coming up. And we really don't need to worry about healing at all, really. I mean, he does have a stab attack that he could use to damage Carver, but that's why I've got the sacred armor on him to regenerate his HP. Okay, now when you see him use Disruptive Wave, that means he's going into Phase 2, where he has a fixed AI script there. Uh, notice that when he used Disruptive Wave, it only affected Carver. Forbearance, or Disruptive Wave, does not work around Forbearance. So all my buffs on my other party members are still good. But I want Rex to recast buff on Carver because he's going to need all the defense he can get. And I want Navan to dual cast multi-heal here because... Yeah, Raging Roar that he just used there. Yeah, that damages your entire party and ignores forbearance. So you need multi-heal to get back on track here. Now, the next thing he's going to do is use some physical attacks, and he might be able to kill Carver even with buff and forbearance. So what I want to do is I want uh, Carver to just defend for this round, because unless I get horrifically unlucky and Nocturnus focuses all of his attacks on one character, he won't be able to kill anyone. Okay, okay, we're still good. So basically, I want Navan to cast, or dual cast, mid-heal on Carver, because that's pretty much enough to bring him back to full HP there. Now, in phase three here, uh, after uh, using that triple attack, in phase three, he could use oomph on himself. If that happens, you want Rex to use disruptive wave, and Carver to just defend, because with, with Oomph on Nocturnus, he will kill you, no matter what you do with Forbearance there. He just has way too much damage. Now, you saw him use uh, c -c Cold Breath there. Uh, that means he actually went back to Phase 1 relatively quickly, so got a little lucky there. Basically, the way his AI scripts work is in Phase 1, he'll use Kazap or C -C Cold Breath. Then, in, on the next turn, he'll use Wind Sickles or that Jumping Stab Attack he's got. And then in the third turn, he'll use Pearly Gates, that purple attack there, or he'll go to Phase 2. So basically, you want to try and keep him in Phase 1 as much as you can. 
obviously there's nothing you can do about it. It's random chance whether he'll use Pearly Gates or st stick around in Phase 1. By the way, in Phase 1, he can use 1 to 2 actions per round. In Phases 2 and 3, he can take 2 actions every round. He'll never just do 1. Okay, now, once you see Disruptive Wave, that means he's in Phase 2. He'll always go, in Phase 2, he'll do Disruptive Wave, Caprizzle, then Scorch and Raising War, then a Triple Attack, and go to Phase 3. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind with uh, when he's going from, well, one uh, phase to another is that if he uses one attack before going to the next phase, he can use that one attack, go to the next phase, and then that resets how many actions he can take. So he'll take two more actions from the next phase. So effectively, whenever he switches phases, he'll get three actions per round. That's really hard to deal with. That's why I have Carver defend in the third round of Phase 2 there. You keeping up with all this, viewers? <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's probably a lot of information to keep in mind there. But yeah, just stick to the strategy and you should be pretty good. This strategy is not foolproof, though. It's just, as far as I can tell... The best I, the best I think I can do without obscenely more level grinding. Because basically the strategy revolves around Carver being a liquid metal slime and using forbearance, while I have Navan uh, he keep everyone healed either with uh, dual casting multi heal or just mid heal on Carver there. And Carver can basically absorb any magical damage that Nocturnus can do to us. Oh yeah, another thing he can do in Phase 3. Uh, he can also use Lullaby, which guarantees put you to sleep even Carver as a mastered liquid metal slime. So you want to watch out for that. Uh, phase 3, by the way, his AI scripts, uh, he can take two actions per round. And then he'll use either some slash attack, like Metal Slash, Dragon Slash, Falcon Slash, or he'll use Lullaby or Oomph. And then, randomly, he'll go back to Phase 1 there. But yeah, his AI script in, in Phase 3 is completely random. There's no fixed AI script or options for one turn to the other, like phase one. No, he just chooses whatever actions he's got at random. So, yeah, it's not like against uh, Mortimer there, where I could plan for when he's going to use Raging Roar and Lullaby by having Rex using Kaklang. No, nothing I can do about that. Well, we're out of MP for Rex there. Yeah, yeah, nothing we can do there. So now what I'm going to have Rex do is pretty much be support for the party with, uh, where is it, Hustle Dance. And Amos and Navan are going to have to carry the load for the damage. So basically, whenever you're stuck in Phase 3, which sometimes can happen, where he just keeps on using physical attacks over and over and over again, there's nothing you can do about it. But once you see Nocturnus use uh, Kazap or Kick a Cold Breath, you know he's back in Phase 1, and you basically have all the time in the world to get your party back up. Well, maybe not all the time in the world, but... You know what I mean. I mean, with Carver using Forbearance, Nocturnus basically can't damage your party. The only thing you can really do is, like I said, Phase 2 uses Raging Roar, so that gets around whatever you can do. By the way, in Phase 2, when he uses Disruptive Wave, he will only do that if you have some buff on your party, whether it be like Ka buff or Oomph or whatever. But all right, got it. So yeah, you, that's one reason why I cast Kabuff in Phase 1 
Even though he's not using very many physical attacks, I just want to have some positive status on my party members, so that way he will cast Disruptive Wave, so instead of using multiple attacks in that round. But alright, so basically what my strategy is designed to do is to beat Nocturnus within 20 rounds. If you do that, well, you get a special ending sequence here. So, let's check it out. You insolent fools! I like how they have all this stuff, like, from the regular fights, too. Even though you're not seeing any damage numbers, or, well, very little, anyway. Hey, that didn't deal that much damage for me. Yeah, kick a cold breath. Usually deals about 210, 220 damage. But that's not good enough against Nocturnus. One thing I also tried to do with my setup against Nocturnus is I wanted to have multiple ways of damaging him. I didn't want everyone to be doing the same thing. Like dual casting Kafrizzle, or... Uh, what is it? Like... Focus Strength, Knuckle Sandwich, or have everyone master the hero job class and just spam uh, Giga Slash like No Tomorrow. Now, I, I wanted to have a variety to my approach to defeating him. But yeah, I mean, if hey, you love job grinding for hours on end, hey, master the hero job class for everyone and get 80 HP regeneration every round. I like how uh, Mortimer goes through his different phases still. Well, at least it looked like uh, people of Castle Grayskull had the right idea after all. They needed someone who was more powerful to keep Nocturnus in check, but... Ha ha. Sorry if I'm going through this a little quickly here. I wish Crackle was more useful. I mean, Kaboom is pretty cool, and so Zap, and Lightning Storm, and what, Magic Burst here. I don't know. I just I just like the ice spells. Well, that was easy. Ha ha. Oh, well, you seem awfully cordial. Thank you. Uh oh, not again. Now, there are some things that are going to be different during the ending here, and some other things I want to show off that I didn't do the first time around. So, I'm going to be skipping around through the ending. Basically, anything that I don't show off is stuff that's identical to the original ending. So, where are we going to go now? Oh, you guys are just going to leave me hanging? Come on, man. Why can't you just teleport us out? Well, we got Pegasus to do the job. How are the sages going to get back anyway? I mean, they don't have Pegasus. I don't know. Nah, I wouldn't worry about it. It's probably not important. Okay, we're back at Ghent during the ending here. And some people wanted me to show off a little piece of dialogue that you get in the party talk here. Man, imagine if I showed off every single line of party talk dialogue for the ending. Holy cow. The end I mean, I love the ending, but... Oh. Uh. 
Oh, okay. What, are you just talking to her telepathically, or what? Oh. <laughs> Maybe that's why she stayed on the ship before we took on... Uh, Murdaugh there. She was just seasick or something. Too embarrassed to say or anything. Well, anyway, uh, another thing I want to show off is that, well, I have more party members, so I want to show them off a little bit at Somnia there in the real world, so see you on the other side. Okay, so if you've actually recruited Mercury, yeah, he or she, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it is here. So, yeah, you can't make it go around anymore. Oh, well. See if I can't find Curie and Shelly around here somewhere. Ah, well, there's Curie. What's going on? Oh. Okay, well, maybe I can find her around somewhere. I don't know. Let's see, where is she? Ah, there she is. Yeah, I figured I'd just cut to when I actually found her. But, yeah, you might want to go upstairs. Okay, so during the credits here, the only thing that really changes is Terry's scene here. Not really a whole lot to it, but... Well, I figured I'd show it to you guys anyway. But we already beat him for you. So that's all for Let's Play Dragon Quest VI. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm really going to miss this LP. Probably going to take a day or two off and then start my next project. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day, and see you next Let's Play.